Visit any grocery store or farmer's market in America, and it's clear. Farmers in the U.S. are producing a food supply unequaled in abundance, variety, and quality. Department of Agriculture statistics show U.S. farm output has tripled in the last 70 years. And as for the affordability of our food, government data show the average American household spends about 10% of its total income on food, the lowest percentage in the world. And just as important, this plentiful, healthy, and economical food supply has not come at the expense of environmental sustainability. American farmers are using less land to feed more people than ever, while the world population has increased 77% since 1980. Total land used for farming in the U.S. is about 12% lower today than it was 40 years ago. That means more land for sequestering carbon, preserving wetlands, and maintaining wildlife habitat. It's taken a century of advances in science and technology to enable farmers to successfully balance natural resource preservation with explosive growth in food production, reliably supplied. One such leap in ag innovation has been the science of preserving soil nutrients and protecting crops from insects, disease, and weeds with agricultural aviation. What we do is take care of the, the crops. So I always try to tell them, it's like when you get sick, you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a prescription. We don't want to just spray the crops. We want to take care of those crops and make sure they are good for people to consume the products. As a mom, I worry about what my kids eat. I want our earth to be around for them later to enjoy. I think it's really important that we have agricultural aviation as a really significant tool for growers to continue to create large yields to feed a growing population. It's really being aware that the two issues are hand in hand, is that you have to reduce environmental impact, but you've also got to make sure that the product that you're putting out is effective. We're not out just, you know, buzzing field and spraying. You know, there's, there's some serious hardcore science and technology that goes into this. That hardcore science and technology launched 100 years ago. After World War I, America got busy finding new peacetime jobs for the relatively new technology of aviation. And it wasn't long before the airplane found work in food and fiber production. The use of pesticides on the farm was in its infancy and was hampered by the lack of efficient and practical methods for applying over large areas. And her U.S. Army Signal Corps research engineer, Etienne Demois, and Army test pilot, Lieutenant John McCready. With the help of researchers and technicians from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Demois succeeded in modifying a Curtis JN4 Jenny airplane to spread insecticide dust in flight. Those guys had some grit and perseverance to fly grossly underpowered airplanes with a load of dust and fly at low level and maneuver it without the state-of-the-art aerodynamic models and technology that we have today to make the airplane more manageable and handle from the pilot's perspective. It's just amazing that they were able to do what they did. On August 3rd, 1921, McCready took off from McCook Field in Dayton, Ohio, with Domois manning his jerry-rigged, hand-crank spreading device bolted to the Jenny's fuselage, loaded with lead arsenate dust. The former World War I fighter pilot successfully spread the dust over a Troy, Ohio catalpa tree grove infested with sphinx moth larvae. And the ag aviation industry was born. It was an outlandish idea back in 1921 when Lieutenant McCready put that calcium arsenate out on a catalpa grove. I don't imagine that many people paid close attention to it at the time, but it was the beginning of a long history of innovation and development uh, that happened really fast. That long history of fast innovation got a jump start over the next two years. In 1924, building on the concepts first tested by Demois and McCready, Huff Dalland Dusters rolled out a biplane nicknamed the Puffer. Dusting southern cotton fields to control boll weevils, the Puffer was the first aircraft designed and built specifically for agricultural aviation. Huff Dalland, by the way, went on to become Delta Airlines. These advances are what keep us 
as an industry alive, 100 years. You know, I mean, that is why we're here. We change with the times. We have people who are innovative and they come up with the products that keep us in business. Through the mid 20th century, ag aviation grew to become a staple tool in agricultural production. Today, farmers rely on ag planes not only for fast and efficient crop protection, but also for application of plant nutrients and the seeding of cover crops critical to modern soil conservation. And with the benefits of aerial application demonstrated with every flight, non-agricultural uses for the tool have become commonplace. We're not just about food, we're also about public health. And when you get a mosquito outbreak or you get a West Nile virus outbreak, the best solution is the airplane. And as we all know, we have a very serious situation with fires. And some of the same pilots have transitioned from the aerial application business into the firefighting business. When you look at 10 decades of existence, I mean, in today's high-tech society, how can you continue to exist unless you're embracing that high-tech? and unless you serve a very important purpose. For agricultural aviation, a hundred years of embracing technology has brought the industry from World War I surplus planes powered by a pre-Model T engine to the 1600 horsepower turbine engine aircraft of today. It has brought high-tech advances inside the cockpit, like night vision equipment and computer-controlled systems that can make mid-flight adjustments in application rates and even correct for wind speed and direction. And if you think GPS is handy on your phone and in your car, imagine what it has done to enable pinpoint accuracy in aerial application. Innovation and technology will continue to power agricultural aviation as it takes off into its second century. Hyper-precision application of increasingly safe and pest-specific materials and plant nutrients is on the horizon, and industry experts say they're on the cusp of automated systems that will take over the management of applying the product and enable the pilot to focus just on flying his or her aircraft safely. But one thing hasn't changed in 100 years and is sure to remain constant into the future. Agricultural aviation is a critical part of a high-stakes business. You're making the deal with that farmer that you're gonna apply that product correctly on his crops that he's betting his fortune on. You're making a deal with the consumer that you're gonna apply that materials correctly so it's safe for them. And you're making a deal with yourself to do the best you can always be.